Talk about talent. Meet Hollywood's newest star. Releasing on the 19th of September, Mortal Kombat 1 is so close we could almost grab it with a scorpion chain yank. Get over here! So what better time to quiz NetherRealm creative director Ed Boon about the importance of single player modes, what next gen power brings to Mortal Kombat, and the secret to updating classic characters. As this is the first Mortal Kombat made specifically for PS5, what conversations do the team have about how to use that extra power? I always felt like like one of the, the, the biggest, the most exciting advancement with the next generation systems was the solid state hard drive. Basically being able to access data really fast and you would be surprised how many things that we do under the hood to allow the most high fidelity graphics but also try to reduce the amount of wait time that we have uh, in the game so the player is just going right into the action as quick as possible. And so there's a lot that's done under the hood that lets us make the game look as nice as it does, but also really flow in terms of movement. And is there much debate about where you use the console's power visually? Everything could be as real as you want. Where do you draw the line? One of the things that we, we always have to manage when we're making these games is how much memory are we going to devote to the characters and how much to the backgrounds. And with this game, we've added these cameo characters. So in a sense, we have to have four characters resident in memory, as well as these amazing backgrounds. So the solid state drive does help with that, but there's still memory management that has to be done. And uh, as far as like the art style and the, and the visual look, I think we kind of embraced a little bit more vibrant colors and these new, uh, the next gen hardware has uh, HDR, which is the high dynamic range. And so we really embrace the highs and the lows in terms of just a, a much broader range of color spectrum. We noticed sound coming out of the DualSense controller. Is it fun to play around with these functions? Yeah, yeah. And anything that we can do that is um, different, something that we haven't done before, or just other other forms of feedback to the player, whether it's in the controller, the speaker, the the audio, and we have accessibility features that we we do. All, all of that, we really embrace that stuff. I'd love to know your process for bringing back returning characters. Do you start with a look, a mechanic, a story? A lot of what um, defines or motivates us for what a character is going to look like is the story. Like, for instance, Scorpion and Sub-Zero have always been in opposite clans, right? And so now, them being in the same, you know, there's similarities with their costumes. And so that's actually the opposite of how we've approached it historically. But the story usually drives a lot of what design a costume, uh, will, will, a character's costume will be. Prepare to regret ever crossing the Link Way. Fight! And what about coming up with new moves for old faces? Are you super aware of everything you've done with them before? Yeah, we absolutely feel like we have a certain, um, like, signature moves that a character should, you know, Sub-Zero's always going to have his ice, Scorpion's going to have his spear, but a lot of the, uh, the new moves that are coming our design team, some of them are so young that, that you know, they, they don't even remember the older games. So they have to go back to the older ones and say, oh, that's what they did. Let's try something different here. And uh, so, so you get a fresh set of um, eyes on it. And, um, you know, when you have a younger mind coming up with things that we were, we were doing 30 years ago, it just keeps it great. Um, it keeps it really keeps it fresh. Let us meet your champion. You've recently revealed Sindel for Mortal Kombat 1. How is the new universe treating her? Sindel and Shao Kahn's relationship is one of those ones that we are kind of playing with, uh, changing around, you know, giving like a new origin between them. You know, Sindel is still, you know, the queen and she's the one in charge and Shao, Shao Kahn, it's not as, um, you know, like before they were like husband and wife and a, a much different um, relationship with each other. And, and so this one, it's a little bit more adversarial. It's a little bit more territorial. And um, to me, that's exciting. It's just like, you know, seeing characters that were both very bonded be, you know, 
a little more at odds with each other. Oh, BT dubs, there's a key under the rock. Mortal Kombat introduces invasion mode. What can players expect from that? Invasion mode is our new and additional uh, single player uh, experience in the game. So you can imagine invasion mode as a board game that is about as big as you know, a few city blocks, like in New York or something like that. And um, each, the, the, the player is kind of advancing to the different nodes. Each one contains a challenge or a prize or a treasure chest or a, a tower that'll come up for a fight. And the player progresses through it, going through all of the, these mesas, basically, which is each one is a gigantic board. And that is the main place in this game to get rewards, to get um, you know currency, and to get all of the, um, the the hidden features that are in the game. So, as long as I've known you, you've dreamed of leaving Fengjian. Why can't you be happy here? The Mortal Kombat series has a long history of substantial single-player modes. Why is single player so important to Mortal Kombat? At its core, Mortal Kombat is two characters fighting against each other. So that can be in a number of ways. Like two friends can on a couch and play the game and fight against each other. It's a lot of fun. You can play online against strangers. But at the end of the day, some people are just intimidated by going online and just getting their butt beaten, you know, so many times in a row. At, at some point, we need a more casual experience for the player not to feel so much pressure and to learn the game more so later on maybe they can get online and that's really the inspiration for the single player modes the story mode and now invasions is we really want players to have a friendly uh, uh, less pressure situation where they can onboard them to the game get a bunch of rewards see a cool story play out and invasions absolutely checks that box as well Do you tend to play single player or multiplayer? I really like our single player uh, experiences. I mean, it's always fun to go online and, and, and fight against people, but um, I really enjoy our, our story mode and Invasions is, is, I'm very excited about that mode, yeah. Finally, we've obviously seen some wild stuff in Mortal Kombat 1, but is the wildest stuff yet to come? Yeah, the, the, the big reveal recently of, of Invasions is, is what, you know, is kind of making the rounds right now, is, is um, making people familiar with, with what that mode is. But there is definitely, like, when you see how the story ends, it's crazy. It's really crazy what we're doing there. And you can see how crazy it gets when Mortal Kombat 1 releases on PS5 on the 19th of September. Which character are you going to take for a spin first? Let us know in the comments and do give this video a like if you enjoyed our chat with the delightful Ed Boon. Subscribe for more exciting stuff from the world of PlayStation and we will see you again soon. Thank you all so much for watching.